Welcome to Talking In Stations. I am Matt Earl here with Ash Talking In Stations. Didn't hear you. Oh! <laughs> and, what is going on? What, I, I'm getting an echo. Oh, gosh. It's okay. Oh, there it is. Okay, great. <laughs> Greetings, fellow Empyreans. I'm Ash Tarothy, and apparently I'm the one with the technical difficulties this morning. No, I just, I, for some reason, the stream was broadcasting sound when, when I wasn't expecting it to. So, like, I heard you twice, and then I was really confused. Got it. Got um, it. Yeah. Welcome. It's a good weekend. Yeah. Uh, also, I want to introduce Strata, who's here with us. How's it going, Strata? Hello. Good to see you again. And we have Gregorin uh, off screen. How are you doing, Gregorin? Hello. All right. We're going to go over the news today. Uh, Christmas truce in EVE Online. What? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, the NOL Keepstar, though, will go under attack before that happens. It's in its final timer. That's NOL system in Delve. Would be the first Keepstar to go down for the Imperium if it happens. Also, a fight in Great Wildlands between Wrecking Crew and Red Alert. That's been heating up. Uh, and then we have a Red Alliance POS that was destroyed with some goodies inside. And we'll have uh, other news besides that. Uh, oh, of course, the world news, is big, which is really what we're going to focus on today. And uh, Estrathi will take us through that kind of stuff. But uh, there you go. That's the news. We'll get started now on the Christmas truce. Okay, this has not happened. Um, I think this is actually the first time it's happened, but the uh, leaders of Pappy, I think, and leaders of the Imperium have both asked that nobody creates timers on December 24th and 25th uh, so that people can take a proper holiday without stressing about the game. I don't think that's happened before. I think Imperium's done that on their own unilaterally, but I haven't seen two sides make that truce. What do you guys think? Well, I mean, it happened in 1914. Well, yeah, <laughs> they played <laughs> they played soccer in the trenches. Uh, different circumstance, but yeah. I mean, I guess that's the point. Like, if real soldiers can put aside their differences to be decent to one another for the sake of Christmas, then maybe uh, internet spaceship hooligans can do it as well. Might be a Christmas miracle. Yeah, my first reaction was, "Hey, this is a space game. It's not a Christian game." Triglavians don't know Jesus. Like, what? <laughs> what? No. Um, fight or die 365 days a year. Uh, but. I would like to enjoy any flights on Christmas, but I guess I'm not doing that. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I think it's more yeah. for the sake of the pilots behind the characters as opposed to the characters themselves. I don't think it's for role-playing purposes that they're, they're trying to make this truce happen. Yeah. Astro Astrothy, is, is there not a uh, lore reason why they may be taking this off? There, I mean, there is <laughs> the Yule event, as we now, as we know, which is based on the Yule conference, which was when, uh, like, New Eden Standard Time and all that kind of stuff was established. Um, which is different than the Yule Accords, which was the Peace Accords. The Yule, the Yule Festival celebrates uh, the 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 name Yule comes from the name of the Jovian ship that the meeting was took place on. Ha! There you go. It's a, it's a, it's a I, definitely a celebratory I, uh, event. I surrender to lore. astroth has got yay no calendars. <laughs> Let's not fight for the sake of calendars. Uh, I think it was Y two, Y two A, Y two O, and they got annihilated. So I thought, well, who's the fleet commander that gets a Raven fleet annihilated? It's Y Tac two A N O. Well, Pro God is that guy, and you can't tell if it's uh pro god kind of his character covers his face so well, goonstorm did uh have some raven fleets for the keep star fights in npc delve after this uh yes after af after this uh trailer came out you think they were wanting to to mimic the trailer i'm not sure yeah. uh initiative uses uh ravens all the time so it could have just been their their membership saying these are cheap one hulls you can use as far as battleships uh well who knows anyway i just thought like in, instead of somebody owning that trailer i think it's debatable i like asher very much and i would love to give him a trailer i would love to give drones to uh, t2 salvage drones to dunk dinkle but um i think you know got to share the game 
Okay. Uh, given, given the fact that your your picture's on the side of a keep star in one of the videos, I think that that's a yeah. I, I object to that. I objected to that. <laughs> I was actually very annoyed that they put my face on a. They put huh. they put people's faces on videos on a keep star like at the end of a trailer. I thought like, wow, I was really buying that trailer, and because it showed people in the game doing things in the game, not people showing other people the game and talking about it. But I think they're trying to highlight that this is a big community and we've evolved with the times. But I really liked uh, the uh, this is the 15 year anniversary of EVE Online trailer where they show a timeline of what people have done and where they started and where they ended and just the, the graphics updates and the momentous milestones that players created. And I just thought streamers have no business being in something that sacred. That's kind of how I looked at it, including myself. But I was, well, at, I, I think I, that it is at the end. I saw it yeah, as yeah. being like, this is, this has been the future. Cause that's what it trans was transitioning into. Yeah, it could be. All right, the uh, next item is the uh, NOL Keepstar. Speaking of Keepstar fights, final timer on this thing. It got reinforced, um, I want to say, three days ago on a Friday. It was put through armor on a Saturday. And then they rolled a really bad time for Europeans. So it's going to happen in US time zone and really late European time zone. I believe it's going to be one or two in the morning for them. It's something like uh, right after tomorrow's TIS show. Right. So it's kind of late. Yeah, because we start at midnight for, for Europeans. Also, there was an attempt on that system to take out that um, iHub. Wasn't like a last minute attempt, wasn't there today? Yeah, to take out the Sino Jammers. Right. And they did take out a Sino Jammer, but there's multiple Sino Jammers. They didn't take out the one that was on duty but they took out one of the backups. And they, yeah, I think they anchored their own to take up one of the slots. Mm -hmm. Cause you can only have three in the system. And uh, so what they did is they destroyed one and then they put their own up, which jams up uh, that slot. So there's only one. Is there only two now? Uh, three. There are a maximum of three, and I think the backup was probably destroyed, but I'm not quite sure. Yeah, so we think that the Pappy has one that's working because they own the system and they can put the iHub in working order. And they have one more on standby in case that one gets destroyed. Uh, this is what 1DQ has on the Imperium side. Uh, but uh, the Imperium was successful in taking up one of those slots. So instead of two backups, now Pappy has one backup, which could be pivotal. Can they like just at any time take out that one though? Because it's it's low powered, so it's just one you just knock it out, right? Yeah, they actually attacked it uh, right away, but I think it has one cycle, so you have to come back like in twenty four hours. I'm not sure. I'd have to double check. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another thing that happened is the fight in Great Wildlands between Wrecking Crew and Fire and Red Alert. Red Alert is, as you remember, from Providence, and Wrecking Crew is the group that knocked out uh, Provi holders or Provi block. So Red Alert was in, uh, I think, it was it Great Wildlands? They were trying to do the not red, don't shoot NRDS out there. And Wrecking Crew, or some elements of Wrecking Crew are out there kind of harassing them uh, a bit more. So Fire yeah. Coast, go ahead. Yeah, uh, it was mainly at first didn't want that solve anyway, which is so group among the more traditional Wrecking Crew stuff guys, not like the recent uh, people who've come in, like the Rogue Consortium or, or uh, the guys who used to live in Domain Losec who are trying to just do regular living in Nullsec type stuff. It was more the traditional PvP-oriented Wrecking Crew guys who deployed on their own to Great Wildlands. Someone made a joke that... Someone from Dreadbomb once made a joke it's reverse Stockholm Syndrome that they don't know who else to fight anymore. <laughs> They're attached to their victim as opposed to their victim being attached to their captor. Yeah. But also, yeah, this particular fight shows that, well, about a week and a half ago, RC as a whole reset Pappy standings, which uh, some of the 
the alliances like didn't want that sob anyway and dreadbomb weren't on the standing list but it, uh, the coalition as a whole was so this i get, looks like it might have been the first big fight that rc as a coalition f- did against fire since that reset well, it looks like it didn't go very well if I'm looking at this correctly. I mean, they got 33% yeah, according- efficiency. They lost $100 billion on this fight. Yeah, according to Sully, who's in fire, uh, his guys held the grid. Yeah, they won the day. I think the fight was over an Astra house timer, but he wasn't 100% sure. So there was a tactical objective, but I think the real... Uh, the real objective was to do some damage, but uh, it looks like Wrecking Crew is the one that got damaged. Uh, 100 billion, 101 billion they lost, uh, but they did manage to knock out uh, 50 billion uh, from Fire Coalition and Friends. I, I'm i having difficult. How uh, Does that say how many people were on each side? Yeah, up here at the top. Uh, well, actually, on each side, yes, it's right here. Uh, 200 people versus 140. So Wrecking Crew was outnumbered oh. almost two to one. Oh, the P, okay, people. Got it. Yeah, P for people. Yeah, it looks, it looks like Purple Helmet Warriors came in with a bunch of extra dreads that kind of outnumbered yeah. the other guys, right? So. Now, the thing is that Wrecking Crew has traditionally been a lot more capital heavy than sub capital heavy. So. Most people have dreadnoughts. Well, I see the Astrohus on, yeah, so the Astrohus is on the defending side. So the people that had less people were the ones that had the Astrohus? Yeah. That's correct. So. Uh, yeah. So Dark side. It's a, it's a Russian group, belongs to Stain. Russians, I think. So. I think yeah, that... Dark side lives in NPC Geminate, and yeah. they're Russian, so they. Their traditional activity is harassing whoever lives in Geminate at the time or nearby, which in the past year or so has been mainly Horde and Horde renters. So you said that the Astrohus, was it successfully reinforced? No, Sully said uh, he believes the timer was at, over an Astra house. I don't know whose timer it was, who was on the defense, who was on the offense. But the timer, well, I, I like assume it's, it's the Astrohus that's on yeah. the report. Right, right. So until I saw that, I didn't know. Uh, so dark yeah. side, but dark side okay. is again a Russian group. I don't know what side they're on in this. I mean, the well, I, 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 puts I say them that because outnumbered side, but right. I, I say that because it, just looking at the numbers right here, if you have one that they lost about twice as much as their opponent, and they had about like two thirds of the forces of their opponent. Um, which, if they were the attackers, then yeah, they got repelled pretty well. But if they're the defenders. That is a desperate but effective defense, especially if they held the timer. If they're able to push them off, that's why I was asking. Like, really, this really this boils down to whether or not the objective was secured. Yeah. All right. Well, looks like a lot of the damage is actually not done to Wrecking Crew, but done to Dark Side. I don't think Dark Side's in Wrecking Crew, so. No, they're not. Mm. Yeah. So okay. Wasn't... So this report may not be right, anyways. Oh, it's right. It's okay. just that they 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 probably third partied or came in on a fight and uh got it didn't get as hurt so wrecking crew didn't get as hurt as the the guys that were actually defending okay yeah um what's this next part here wrecking crew had previously been on a wartime standings agreement with the on a coalition level with a few yeah that, yeah that was so uh, like i said earlier until about a week and a half ago rc was on the pappy standings list and then about a week and a half ago they reset uh so so they're now no longer blue with the Pappy alliances. Okay. It's no longer blue with the Pappy. I know they were third partying everything. I didn't know what their status was. Okay. Well, so, go ahead. Some alliances were not on the standings list, like uh didn't want that Sov anyway, which was the one that deployed to Great Wildlands and Dreadbomb. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, even though they had joined the standings list, uh, the war is not the kind of content that most of RC is interested in. So, so a, a lot it was not many of them uh, actually deployed. Okay, 
All right. The so, next. So the main effect that it had was it made it impossible for Pravi Block to call in their usual allies. Okay. It, Go ahead and, and that was it. why they that was why Pravi Block worked with Snuffed Out toward the end because their usual allies legacy weren't available due to standings. Got it. All right. In other news, we have Red Alliance losing a pause that had a couple hells inside of it. I think did they pop out? Let's see. A ton of stuff. I'll probably just look at the amounts and see where they are. I don't know if ships pop out. I think they get destroyed automatically. Here's one, two, actually, and they did pop out. I don't. I think they get. They should be. They should be able to pop out. Yeah, I think they do. It right? doesn't. Yeah, it looked like hmm? the loot fairy said yes on that one. Well, I think it said yes yeah, to everything. It. No, it didn't. Yeah. It's very strange how much loot is on this that yeah, was that. came out. Right, that's weird. Well, this crow right? didn't. Usually, what happens in this case? Usually, what would happen? Sorry. Usually, I, what you would expect when you see something like this. I don't know if it's true, but uh, if you found a container in there, I don't know if that's possible in this case. But when I see a ton of loot all dropping. It usually means that they're all bundled. It was all bundled together, so that way it all yeah. rolls once. Each oh, chip is a container, so I, my my right. guess is that it all that stuff is in the hell. The two hells both rolled uh, to drop, and then each of the stuff, all all the right. stuff that dropped was in the hells or in chips Correct. or in the hell. All right. Well, anyway, uh, Loot Fairy said yes to this drop. I don't know who killed them. Uh, I looked at their. I'm not, I don't recognize the alliances, but uh, a pause these days is kind of rare, right? You don't usually see these, especially things parked in um, maintenance bays because you have stations normally. So, I, yeah, why I wouldn't they be that, in a cube jar? I assume that this is like a ratting pause at some point because yeah. I think that they are useful for ratters' pauses still because uh, you can. I, I'm not sure exactly the mechanics behind it, but it's easier to use them than a normal station okay. lower they profile. are much yeah they're much much lower profile that's why i know some people that use them in 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 wormholes and stuff for that reason too yeah. like the chances of somebody seeing your pos and then deciding to come and attack it as opposed to your structure very different yeah all structures are on the radar as soon as you come in but a pause you have to kind of go look for it yeah, and this is actually something I didn't realize for a long time, is that, like, so if you descan a POS, you'll see the POS, that's fine, but it says range is blank, just like if you see a ship on descan. But structures are not blank. You actually know the absolute distance to a structure uh, if you descan it. So you can actually warp to a structure that you descan, even if you don't have permissions to it. Oh. Yep, you you can warp to a structures from your D scan by right clicking on when it comes up. Mm -hmm. They are warpable. Okay, so New Eden news today. We want to check that out. Uh, Ashtarothy, what can you tell us about the in game news? Yeah, hold on. Let me pull it up and uh, take a swig of water and I'll get to reading. <laughs> swig of water. <laughs> there's, a lot of, there's a lot of words here. Oh, well, you don't have to read it all, but uh, if you want to. No, no, no. This is my uh, this is my intent. Like, so the world news, uh, just to give everybody a little bit of background. Quite often, people feel that there's not uh, any lore going on in the in the universe. Like, they may even know about Inheritance or Caroline Star or Templar One, but like they don't know about what's happening in the moment. And one of the reasons why is because people don't read the world news. And the world news updates somewhere between once every couple of weeks to once or twice a week, depending on how active things are. And so uh, about a week ago, a little over a week ago, uh, Bailful, Dysnomia, and I, um, on the Friday TIS, we did the previous Galactic Hours news roundup from the World News. And people really seem to dig it. So I think that it's like it's worth just reading them since they're written as if they're news podcast so this is a new show here's your news for the day uh, for the week
Galactic Hour News Roundup. No peace in New Eden for Yule Festival Edition. The, Gal the Scopes Galactic Hour with Rhett Gloriax brings you the roundup of the latest news from around the cluster during the Yule Festival season YC-122-123. As Kaldari authorities thwart a bombing attempt in Jita and Sanchez Nations and the Triglavians continue to wreak havoc around the cluster. Attempted bombing in Jita-44, Moon Space Elevator, thwarted by Kaldari Navy and Space Lane Control, uh, Patrol. Cheetah, the Forge. Authorities in the Cheetah system have halted, uh, sorry, have hailed the Caldari Navy and Space Lane Patrol for their vigilance and professionalism in thwarting a, quote, serious attempt by anarchist terrorists to destroy the Cheetah 44 Moon Space Elevator and inflict massive casualties, end quote. Reports of an attempted bombing emerged this morning with Tomi Mikai. Uh, Mihaika, oh man, Kaldari names, <laughs> Navy Chief of the Security for Jita, uh, confirming this afternoon that an attempt had been thwarted. Officials release for, really, official releases from the Kaldari Navy and Space Lane Patrol state that the joint operations by Navy and corporate security forces intercepted a, quote, terrorist unit attempting to infiltrate a small nuclear fission device into the cargo section of an elevator car, end quote. The release went on to state that, quote, while relatively primitive, had this device exploded aboard the car, it would have caused massive casualties and potentially inflicted st sufficient structural damage to the elevator to cause a catastrophic failure event, end quote. Such a structural failure would have, been, would have had the potential to have caused huge damage and casualties at both the moon and station end of the elevator. Authorities believe that the attempt was made by the Caldari Navy forces were in the process of handing... Excuse me. Ath authorities believe that the attempt was made as Kaldari Navy forces were in the process of handing over security duties to space lane patrols in order to capitalize on possible security vu vulnerabilities during the change. It is understood that the Navy intelligence anticipated attempts at smuggling or other covert criminal activity during the handover. Security measures in place to detect such activities led to the discovery of the terrorist unit and their device. Deep core mining and the CB. CBD Mega Corporation has issued statements of thanks to the Caldari Navy and Space Lane Patrol. Caldari State Broadcast Services are currently framing the event as evidence of the revitalized professionalism and efficiency of the Navy following the replacement of most of their civil, senior naval staff with corporate security forces officers. State, mega, cor, state and megacorps outlets are also emphasizing the role of, quote, anarchist terrorists in the anti-CEP protest movement that sprang up during the Triglavian invasions in response to the state's heavy losses. The popularity, this popular movement continues to demand further action to reform the CEP and increases the Caldari state's accountability to worker citizens. C corporate security forces have sporadically suppressed protests in some territories, but the CEP has held back from authorizing a general crackdown so far. So... This is a follow up of what we heard last week, where like not all not everything's good in Mudville when it comes to the Caldari state. Uh, significant financial losses over the couple of years in, uh, and the fact that the Caldari really, really took it on the chin against the Triglavians of unrest already, um, all during the time during Jita's um, renovation. And so here we see. A, uh, an attack on the GDA 44 space elevator, which you can see the elevator itself in, on grid with GDA 44 station. And um, we will have to see how that continues to develop. A couple of notes uh, deep, uh, the CBD mega corporation uh, is one of the mega corporations that runs the whole show uh, of the state. And the CEP is the chief executive pan panel, or this, yeah, which is basically like. Uh, the panel that it consists of the leadership of all of the mega corporations within the state. Yeah, you can see the little space elevator in here. I think I'll zoom in. See it right there in the center. So it's going, and you can see this whole structure outside of Jita or four. Yep, and so you know they've been kind of in inching towards this. Uh, there's been like a, a increasing dis uh, unrest. Um, and then also increasing crackdowns against criminal organizations by uh, by the state. They seem to be trying to deal with this unrest by uh, militarism, which is very indicative of the state. Um, 
But the question is whether or not uh, a strong, you know, like the, the, the state is in a state right now. Huh? The Kaldari are at a point that is very similar to where they were at uh, when Tybus Heth took over. Um, when when the state is at it, when each of the when the mega corporations are weak, when when things are not going great, um, it makes it it opens up the uh, the opportunity for anything from an authoritarian figure or any kind of unrest or disruption within the state. Um, so we'll have to see over the next couple of weeks or months how that's going to play out. Okay, and a little bonus information if you're interested in who Ty was it Tiberius Heath. Tiber Tybus Heth. Tybus Heth. Yeah, I think it's after Tiberius because he takes over the uh, Caldari in a hostile way. Uh, you can check mm -hmm. that out on. I'll just go to Amazon because that's where everybody goes and do uh, a search for the Imperian Age. Yep. Book. And this There's is first novel from Eve, written back in two thousand nine. There's some good chronicles um, that involve Tybus Heth, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, this book uh, describes his, the uprising and how he comes to power. It, it's one story out of four that are interwoven that create the beginning of faction war between empires. And uh, right. that's how you can get that. And the fact that they used that book back then to, to kind of springboard into a whole bunch of other stories... Um, you know, CCP has been putting a lot of work within the lore to kind of reboot some pieces, revitalize some others, put uh, ca new characters into play. Um, but in this case, it's kind of interesting that they've they've really put uh, they've intentionally put the Kaldari at that same like catalyst point that it was when when the book happened. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in one of the world news within the last few months, they explicitly said that the state has not been at this in this kind of condition since uh since the rise of heth and they also militarized the the citizenry about four months ago three four months two three months ago and if that they is... really they the invasions chapter three was not good for the state okay one second a little more context here if you want more history uh there is a trailer called the imperian age trailer and it actually covers um a great big event that is where is I don't know if type you may have seen it. It looks like this, and this has. If you read the book, you'll understand everything that's happening in this trailer. Uh, but there's a number of things. A, a station gets rammed by a Nix. Uh, mm -hmm. You have right here, and you have um, a fleet. It's also where you see Jamil's super weapon. Yes, you see the the. Well, actually, now we know what it, what it is. Uh, you'll see. I think this is a, a Yulai station getting bombed. It has never been recovered. So once this thing was bombed and broken up, uh, they couldn't find Correct. a model for the actual original to restore it. So it just stayed broken <laughs> forever. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. And you'll also see here, um, these are the Minmatar attacking the uh, Amarians. Mm -hmm. uh, trying the Elder to, Fleet. Yeah, trying to free their... their uh, I think they're elders. And this fleet was successful until Jamil shows up and uses this weapon. And that looks a lot like a uh, Keepstar hmm. uh, Doomsday device because that is the same technology. Uh, no. Oh, okay. They're not, not the same technology, but, but the artists did use that as a visual reference. So the, it, but uh, lore wise, they're not related? Okay. No, they're not related. Oh, okay. it, it, the fact if if Keepstars just casually had that super weapon on it, that would be uh, terrifying. It's true. Well, but I think they drew inspiration from that video, right? Because people but yes, yeah, you know, they, they explicitly said that they really liked how it looked and all that stuff, and so it's kind of they they definitely used it as visual reference, but they also at the time explicitly made sure to let us know that that doesn't necessarily mean that it is related and and Jamil's super weapon used as a priming and and uh, firing device uh isogen 5 which is why i'd be deeply concerned if we're just pumping out isogen 5 weapons now and just not <laughs> talking about it all right let's move on to your next piece of news i think oh could, yeah. I, could I quickly ask yeah. ash about the the relevance of these sorts of news articles from the standpoint of you know I, i'm a person who enjoys the lore but i you know i like hearing about 
you know, game updates and stuff like that. Do these news articles, do they tend to hint at specific events that are going to be happening later on in the game? Are they kind of like foreshadowing sometimes? Uh, I, I sincerely believe that this Kaldari one is. Yeah. Um, often they are actually reports of what has been happening, um, which you'll hear from the other ones, as opposed to foreshadowing something going forward. But they're, they they have these long ongoing arcs that have gone uh, that uh, like cover the course of of years. Uh, uh, Arcia Baleful uh, and I discussed this on the Friday episode or on that previous episode, where like the the to understand the lore the article or the the news from that last week, we had to start in 2015. In 2016, when these, you know, there was this attack, and then which led to these things, and which lead lead things. And the really cool thing about it is, when you start tracing things together, like lore characters do this, which lead to players doing this, which leads to lore characters doing this. It's this really interesting story that gets woven between players and and actors, um, in a combination of in-game events, players just doing player things, and these kinds of uh, these updates. All right, let's move on to the next one. Yep, the next one. We are at Sanchez Nations. Mm-hmm. Yep, Sanchez Nations incursion causes mass panic in, in raid and rebellion stricken Nada, Nada system. Nada can Conid region. A Sanchez Nation incursion into the Nada system has caused mass panic on planets still reeling from the recent Blood Raiders attack, slave rebellions, and harsh responses from Conid military forces. The incursions of Homroom constellation staged from Nada itself, and there are reports of attempted landings by Sanchez Nation's forces on Nada 3 and 5. Royal Conid Navy and Royal Ulan forces remain in Nada and the, on the planets in some force, dealing with the aftermath of the Blood Raider attacks and rebellion. Arcan naval units are concentrating the orbital defenses of the third and fifth planets and claim to have totally re- repelled large nation landing forces. Independent reports from Neta 5 confirm that RKN claims, but there are some reports of isolated landings on Neta 3. In contrast to rapidly secured Neta 5, the situation on Neta 3 remains chaotic, with Blood Raider forces and rebels still at large in the countryside of the main populated regions. Large de- developments on the 8th and 19th Royal Ulans were sc- large deployments of the 8th and 19th Royal Ulans were. Sc- scouring the planets for such remains, and it is claimed that they have come into contact with nation forces attempting to abduct the populations of various outlying townships. Latest news. Reports from Neta 5 indicate total lockdown enforced by Royal Olans, while Archean Marines and place more surface-to-orbit defenses around key cities and towns. Additionally, a second attempt by nation forces to land on Neta 3 has come under heavy combined fire from Archean orbital units and surface defenses. So, uh, Balefuls are actually probably uh, one of the people that could talk way more about this. Um, but this is actually what I was talking about. This is more this system of Neta um, a- and the Blood Raider attacks and its relationship with the Kana Kingdom and uh, you know whatnot has been playing out since at least two years ago. Um, during the Crimson Harvest, when they developed Death Glow, which was used to cause um, slave uprisings in Conid planets, um, that story has actually led on to event after event. And like I said, you can watch the previous episode to get kind of a breakdown of that from her. But um, then, after all of that, uh, this week it became invaded, and uh, sorry, inc- uh, it has an incursion. And so this is one of those things that's really interesting to me as somebody who's following all of this, because I have to ask myself, like, how did this happen? Is this just a normal course of events in the fact that the incursion system just happened to choose this system as their target for incursions? Did somebody in CCP like tip the scale to make this incursion this way? Um, and the reason why I say that is because very often, the pattern in which invasions and incursions land end up being in the news, like they follow it. And like in uh, the early days of invasions, I remember there's like 
uh, an incursion, and then the invasion happened right afterwards. And so it started to kind of imply that the Triglavians were like hunting after the Sancha. And here you have uh, an event that like a powder keg that was already being built up, and boom, uh, now you have an incursion. It's just like um, uh, they were working on uh, Serkenta. Like there's this plot and and conflict between the Amarian loyalists and and Mimitar loyalists for uh, or for various different people paying attention to Serkenta for so so long, and then suddenly, boop, it's now Poshvin. So um, it'll be interesting. Like I I'm curious as to see like whether or not that's going to have some sort of lasting effect, or is this just an acknowledgement of the fact that the incursion system just happened to pick. Uh, where they've been paying attention to in the lore, which is pretty funny. Okay, so no. Uh, somebody asked incursion in Jita. The answer is no. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> we. It seems pretty obvious. Um, CCP has all but confirmed the fact that it seems that Jita and other trade systems are explicitly exempted from most content dist distribution systems, um, like incursions or invasions. Mm, okay. All right, what's this last one here? I think this is the last one. Uh, Perunclade. Uh, smuggling reports from Como tell of massive for forced population movements on main inhabited planets. Como, Poshvin region. A collection of eyewitness reports, audiovisual recordings, and holofiles paint a grim picture of a massive move movements of populations from outlying towns and cities to specific zones under heavy Triglavian control. The planets of Como. Six, seven, and nine are heavily are all heavily populated, with their citizens working not just on their home planets, but across the heavily industrialized barren planets of the Como, Como system. The losses of Como to Triglavian conquest was among the most grievous blows felt by the Kaldari people during the war. The collection of materials, the collection of of materials, is reported to have been smuggled off of the main inhabited planets of the Como system by the Kaldari resistance movement. The Triglavi and Perunclade have apparently been heavily fortifying the largest megacities and arcologies on each of the three main planets and enforcing the mass movement of populations from their homes to these secured zones. The reports also provide more evidence of Triglavian bioadaption of the population, with clear evidence of individuals in what appear to be various stages of bodily change. The preponderance of evidence suggests that the population movements are an acceleration of Perunclade's bioadaption program on Como. Attempts at resisting the population transportation has been clearly met with force, sometimes deadly, although independent analysis of the report suggests that these responses are focused. While, concentration, well, while conditions are evidently atrocious and the forced population transits are themselves a gross war crime, indiscriminate massacre or reprisal is not attested in the available material. Despite the overwhelming superiority of the Perunclade forces, all active Kaldari resistance movements appear to have survived and established a network spanning three planets. Unconfirmed reports suggest that Edencom has been supporting resistance movements in Como and similar systems across Triglavian occupied space, with Aegis and spa state peacekeepers rumored to be supplying material and even personnel to the Como network. Above is uh, a, a picture of Cat Seven. If you like cats, that's a good system for you. It's in essence, I believe. Right, which is a uh, yeah. So that's actually part of the next news article, um, which are these are kind of related. So I'll just do this one. Um, Aegis investigation of Triglavian subversion and Cat system focuses on material acquisition station, Cat Essence region. Aegis investigators and paramilitary troops have arrived in Cat Seven, Moon Four material acquisition station, apparently pursuing an investigation in Triglavian subversion into the Cat system, according to local reports. Certain industrial zones and large sections of habitation zones of the station have been placed under security lockdown, and transport between the zones is under increased security control. The events aboard the MA station follow a report that Aegis forces has had occupied and quarantined a research facility on the second moon of Cat 3. The scope's local correspondents have reported that the moon's installation in question was a material acquisition corporation mining research facility. Material acquisition has refused to comment on the reports other than to confirm it is cooperating with federal and Edencom authorities in Cat, and Quaife Megacorp parents have redirected all queries on the matter back to MA's public relations department. In other news, Glente news organizations criticized by uh, politicians over coverage of Poshvin urged to 
emphasize occupied status. Landfall City. This new Caldari Prime protests urging reform of CEP and concessions, concessions to worker classes passes off peacefully. Kumatar Alek Baralasa authorized establishment of RSS anti-war clone unit training facility in Miramurka region. Amar Theology Council rules Alar Chakid and Orlan Zashev to be transported to Inus Lix as cases moved out of mandate. That one's really in particular kind of interesting because that dude, Alor, Alar, is the Canad guy that was uh, part of the whole thing with Baleful, Arissa. Um, That's a and player? Actually, Arissa, yeah, the she, she she's on Talking Stations and is a streamer, Baleful Dysnomia, right? No, no, I'm so talking about she, Alar. Yeah. No, no, that's an NPC character. Oh, okay. He's he, he he's in the, he's a Conad Kingdom general. So when Con, when these firebombs started happening, uh, that was the guy that Baleful talked crap about, and then her private residence oh, yeah. on one of the planets got firebombed. Yeah. And yeah. then now through the series of events, that character has now been arrested, and so there's been this back and forth about whether or not he's going to be moved. Oh. And so Baleful was saying that she was watching this to see whether or not he would get moved, and this is so now. You can see that this is going to happen. So, so uh, if he gets moved, this, is she going to gank him? I don't know. That's actually a really interesting question: is whether or not that's the CCB will give them an opportunity to to do so. Uh, moving on, uh, Skark on two conflicts quote source of concern to Edencom as analysis indicates inflow of combatants comparable to outflow of refugees. Sfarog clade conduct war on Skark on two puzzling, according to CDIA sources. No comment from Edencom. Burst of communication tra traffic from Vale system claims inhabited planets under control of, quote, provisional district governments, end quote. Federal administration and Edencom condemn cooperation with Velis Clade as, quote, collaboration with Triglavian uh, occupiers. DED, quote, satisfy satisfied by capsular disruption of Sanchez Nation's activities in Volatile Ice Storm, but, quote, remains concerned by Nation's agenda. Interbus confirms report a uh, record passenger traffic during the start of the Yule festival season. Pla pleased with success of Yule clones safety campaign. <laughs> Garissa's pirates strike again in coordinated thefts of artwork and uh, executive spies on Ishimono 4, Nani 1, and Sasio 5. Second federal drudge enforce... Enfor yeah. Second dr federal drudge... Wow. Words are hard. Second federal drug enforcement officials slain in Octavane, assassin killed by bodyguard reportedly wore quote anemora cult marks which is a in taki uh, oh. uh it's part of the 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 more um the artists the uh, act activists, right, but, but, activists and artists in taki yes collective by and large their, their culture is that way but there is a fair chunk of the in taki people who have who have been effectively radicalized, you know, like, you know, the Intaki syndicate are the people that have broke, are Intaki that have broken free of this. So this is not like the standard in like just normal Intaki. It's a, it's a, it's a death cult within. Yikes. Yep. Angel cartel base in Sorum prime, uh, reportedly destroyed by Sorum police guards following DED raid on hidden drug facility. And Sorrow Red Troop Unit eliminated Renegade War so Clone Cell in Arnola system, according to reports from Thucker Trading Post. Okay, so uh, just to kind of breeze over some of these things. First of all, what's interesting is, is that every single one of these things are a reference to something. It may be a reference to some previous event. It may be a reference to something that happened in game. Uh, it may be a reference to something that happened in like faction warfare. Um, or it may be just a cute thing, like for instance, in this case, they're referencing the uh, the Yule clones are are the the part of the winter event, the posters that we get for doing the snowball mm -hmm. stuff. Um, let's see. The interesting one, I, I think it's funny that uh, the they one of the things they've been focusing on is paying attention to how the various different systems in Poshvin have developed, and how each of the empires have kind of related to what's happened both on the inside and out. So like the state ha has handled it very poorly and has basically just been militant the entire time. I find it very funny. Like uh, the Galente uh, have 
like they blockaded Vale and then they got accused of like or they got like uh criticized for blockading Vale and now they have provincial like provincial district governments and they're apparently working with the Triglavians. So that's like totally Galente, right? It's like, you know, the people in Vale just looked outside and it's like, oh, oh, the we, we have new owners now. Okay, well, we'll just be part of your group then now. We'll sounds just like create a, a whole new government. Sounds like a renting alliance, right? Like, who do we pay? Just tell us who we pay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, democracy. It's 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 interchangeable. It's great. So are, are there, the CCP do some nod and winks to real life? Like, are there some, uh, is that where some of their ideas come from as kind of a little bit of satire using the lore? I've definitely seen it happen. I mean, I don't, I can't see any uh, exact examples of that. I I, do, I also know that like I've seen Eve and real life echo each other in a very weird way, and I would accuse them of doing that. Except for sometimes it happens echo uh, Eve than real life, so I'm just weirded out by it, and I try not to pay attention. Yeah, because I mean they, um, they said like record record travel over the holiday, you know. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, but that's the thing is is that it is it's the Yule holiday, and so their whole shtick is is that like interbus is now concerned about increased travel during the winter holidays. And therefore that's why they've put out these posters that were part of the winter event. All right. One question thoughts on impact game impacts from this. Uh, you know, these are often somewhat hard to tell. Uh, the thing is, is that each of these, there are things happening in a lot of these systems. If, if any of these plot lines are interesting to you, then you can dig into them and potentially start taking part in them and, and, either watching them unfold or or be helping author them unfold depending on how they work out um the other piece that's interesting to note is that like so for months i've been harming on uh, uh, like banging on the idea that like oh they're focusing on planets they're focusing on war clones they're focus you know like they, we're going to get some sort of pi overhaul and it's been bothering you know, like there's been a splinter in my head but it's worth noting that this week ccp announced that they are working with another company now to produce that uh, nebulous f shooter FPS. that they've been working on for like, yeah. no, it's a, a shooter, oh, not a first person oh, okay. shooter. Okay. shooter. Um, and so uh, whatever that, so if you are creating a new shooter in the, in the IP, then it would make sense that if you have a, like you have a five-year development plan or a three-year development plan, whatever it is for that shooter, then you would also spend that time building the background lore that will dovetail into that. So I'm actually now more convinced that a lot of this lore that we've been seeing involving war clones may eventually just basically become the story that explains what is happening, or at least that game will like make that plot activate. And then we'll be able to go back on all of these different threads and be like, oh my gosh. I'm thinking, you know, Yule clones, it's a Christmas shooter, right? That's right. Oh, no. No, that's no, the, so the Yule clones are a totally separate thing. The Yule clones is actually a reference to uh I uh, you know, CCP is an Icelandic company and they like to bring their culture into it, especially in the earlier days. There's a great video I posted it or I I, I tweeted it earlier. It's uh the 2012 Yule Lads video. If you just it, literally if you if you go on YouTube and you search for like Eve Online Yule Lads um you there's two different videos at least that they've made about it both of them are really funny but basically there's this icelandic tradition um that there's these yule lads which are the the sons of grand grinelda i think it was the witch the the hag um and so these 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 children would come to your home like one every night up until christmas and like one of them wants to eat your candles and one of them wants to bang your doors and they all have names based off of these things and so uh they they talk about them uh or you know like they, they this is their way of bringing that into the into eve so the 13 uh you yule clones are a one-to-one -one reference to the 13 yule lads i don't think i, I, I think <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, uh, that's interesting. I didn't realize that's what they were doing there, but that's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the commentary in these videos are actually really good, too. But uh... Oops, why did that work? Is 
Stubby. Spoon liquor. Yuck. Pot liquor. Bowl liquor. Door slammer. Whoa. So, uh, interestingly enough, in the, in the Christian tradition, the 13 days of Christmas are the 13 days after Christmas. Because it's the 13 days that the wise men traveled to go see you know, the Christ child. Um, but in Icelandic tradition, the 13 days of Christmas are the 13 days leading up to Christmas. Which is why we get gifts uh, for the 13 days leading up to Christmas and Eve instead of after, or the focus is on the presents before Christmas instead of after. But it wasn't a, a pagan-based religion that they had before Christianity, right? And they kind of merged the two. I understand that, but I'm saying like years ago when they first started doing the 13 days of Christmas, somebody like right. pointed out to them the 13 days of Christmas. Somebody, I don't know who would be pedantic enough to point out something like the 13 days of Christmas after <laughs> Christmas. And they were like, actually in Iceland, the 13 days of Christmas come before <laughs> Christmas. And this is why and I'm like, well, okay then. A lot also, of people would be pedantic enough to do that. Also for corporations to sell you more stuff. Oh, here are the Yule lads. Uh, they're pirates now. Yeah, well, in, in 2000, the, the story was is that they 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 ganked Santa, and so now they're bringing these presents to you. <laughs> or, yeah, something like that. I actually don't think I've seen this video, or I have completely wiped it from my memory. The, the other Yule Lads video is actually really good, too, because it's a based off of the... Uh, nice rocket. This is Vic. Yes. <laughs> Goodbye, Sam. <laughs> oh, hilarious. They really did a good job getting uh, all dressed up for that. Mm-hmm. Is um CCP guard still with the with CCP or is, no, is he gone? He left uh, about a year and a half ago from the community team. Whole because, new community team, actually. There's nobody. Yeah, because still, I, he still does permaban though. Yeah, true. But I my my uh, inkling is that he had a lot to do with a lot of the uh, those sorts of videos, you know. Yeah, he certainly had a lot of that energy. All right. Well, that's our news today. Uh, Real quick wrap up. We're coming up to the 24th, 25th when a lot of you will be busy. So we don't expect a lot of viewers, but we'll try to keep these coming for people who want to check in. There won't be a lot of news, obviously, from EVE Online since things will probably slow down. Uh, but today we did talk about a Christmas truce between the forces of Pappy and Imperium. Uh, the NOL Keepstar is going to be fought over before Christmas. I think it's actually on a Monday. Sorry, on... Yeah, it's... Tomorrow, tomorrow, actually, pretty much right, right after tomorrow's show. In 24 So right hours. around 24 hours from now. Yeah, right. Thanks. Uh, Wrecking Crew so, in Great Wildlands and Red Alliance uh, loses a pause. And then the world news. Go ahead, Gregorin. One thing that's worth pointing out about the NOL Keepstar is that Gobbins has pointed out a few times, including in his town hall uh, the weekend before this past one, that the, starting in January, the 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 Keepstar attack tempo will get a lot faster, and we'll no longer be waiting for Sino Jammers to be available. Okay, well that is interesting. We'll cover that tomorrow. We'll actually think about it, try to get some more information on it, because that could signal a change in uh, plans. Because remember, there was a strangulation type plan. That's why it was for a while it's called the Anaconda technique of choking out the Imperium. Now that they and have that it back up into Cardi B song, right? And the Cardi B song, yeah. I, I, no, no, yeah. that's uh well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if she has a song. Oh, is it Nicki Minaj? Is that one? Probably sounds like a Nicki Minaj song. Well, either one, actually. But while, while you're doing that, can you, I just posted a link in the, and can you open that up and show people? Because so this weekend uh, was the Luminaire snowball fight. And oh, right. Razorin got made a amazing album of visuals. This dude is incredibly good at these kinds of visuals. 
Oh, I guess wow. that's another reminder to check out the in-game event right now. It's fun, and it's actually pretty profitable if you're looking to make a bit of isk. It's worth a. It's very profitable right now. That's a nice photo. Oh my god! You get some sweet, sweet skins. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure. So there's a good chance that the Ooh, the photo. the only way to get those skins is by doing that. Uh, you know the tasks because those are bind on activation. So uh, in particular, if you're interested, the capsule uh, Aurora skin, this is the first capsule skin with a particle effect. Uh, and, it ca it, and it's only 50 points, which is so it's the first reward in the track. So everybody should at least try to get that 50 points so that way you can get the, uh, the really cool capsule skin. Well, fantastic artwork from Resorian. Now, actually, part of CCP. He's also uh, one of our art directors here, at talking in stations. That's right. Okay. I don't. I'd actually forgotten that. Yeah. He, so much has happened, man. He and Corn. Right. All right, guys. Thanks very much for joining us today. If we don't have anything else, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Uh, we will. That's, end it. Up That's what I got. Thank you. End up seeing you guys tomorrow, and uh, until then, fly safe. <laughs>